What's happening, Captain? This morning, before we open, I'm gonna try to take apart this AC unit, outside unit, show you, uh, show you how it's done real quick. So right now we're gonna power walk over to it, show you the unit we're gonna take apart. It's bright because the sun just came out. So we're gonna take apart this unit right here. The motor's already taken off for us. Actually. So we're gonna take this thing apart real quick before we open up here. Just kind of give you a rundown how I take these uh, AC units apart. And then we're gonna put them on the scale and see how much they'd be worth to the customers. So uh, here we go. All right, real quick before we begin, I just wanna go over uh, <clears throat> some of the tools that I'm gonna use. Uh, obviously you got gloves. I love these gloves. They're only a dollar something a pair. These are my favorite type of gloves to work with because they have texture on them. They're not expensive and they last a really long time. <clears throat> and uh, you know, you want an impact drill. Uh, like I've said in a lot of my other videos, I only use impact drills. I don't use regular drills because uh, we don't need to worry about, uh, you know, being smooth with it because we're destroying stuff. Uh, I have these cable cutters. You buy these at Home Depot. They're probably more expensive there, but, uh, you know, I, I, I buy the Klein cable cutters. Uh, these will last you forever. Uh, I've had some that have lasted me four or five years. Uh, a lot of people are like, oh, you can't cut copper tubing with that. It's going to dull them out. Uh, hasn't for me I mean if you cut iron with them it's gonna mess it up so don't cut any iron especially if you get like ACSR or something like that you think you're cutting aluminum but you're really cutting iron that's gonna wear those blades out <laughs> but other than that I cut a lot of stuff with these I think they're awesome um, I think I've explained it in other videos you can sit there and put stuff on it and really pry down on it and then a sawzall just bought this the other day put it in another one of my videos uh, you know I'm using battery operated sawzall because I'm pretending that I'm outside. Well, I am outside, so I guess I'm not pretending. But <clears throat> I'm using all tools that you could use at home, you know, if you go and buy this stuff. Uh, and then you want a good bit set uh, that has most of your bits, and then I, I don't show it, but I got a bunch of other tools in the tool bag that I might need to use. Um, but you can take apart the majority of stuff with this right here. These are expensive, but well worth it. All right, let's begin. All right, so as you can see here, somebody's already uh, tried to take the motor out, or they, they unscrewed right here, here, and here. Normally it's screwed on to the top of it. And we're gonna go ahead and take that off. Grab these loppers here, cut these wires. And we're gonna go ahead and pull that sucker out of there. All right, so we have our motor fan here. Sometimes these blades are aluminum, sometimes they're iron. You gotta check it with a magnet to be able to tell. Sometimes it easily comes off right here, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I cut the rod of the sawzall. I'll show you all that in a bit. But I'm gonna get that off by taking these out right here. And we'll do that a little bit later. All right, so we require you know documentation showing proof that you had all the Freon properly removed. I mean, it's actually a state law here in Texas. Um, but just to be sure, before you begin, and, and I'm not an AC expert, okay, I destroy these things for a living, that's all I do. So, uh, take it with a grain of salt. I'm doing something unsafe. Well, I've been doing that since I came out my mom. So, uh, right here, you have valves right here, and they have these little pressure thing pins in there. And you can just take a screw or something, obviously, don't put your eyes in front of it and have gloves on. Try not to get your hands in it. But that's how I always just make sure that there's not Freon in there because you don't want that going out and ruining our atmosphere and environment or whatever it does. It ain't good. That's all I know. <clears throat> Probably not good for your health. So just check that before you start cutting any copper or anything like that. All right, I normally don't worry about any of these wires right here. I mean, if they're easily accessible and you can easily you know, yank them off like this, you know, go for it, whatever. Um, I'll take them from here. 
can probably cut them. Throw them over to the side. thing to do is take off all the outside pieces first, throw those over with your iron. Part, the more you'll find that you don't have to take every screw out but sometimes I do it just uh, so I don't run into any problems later uh, this seems to always work out better unit probably worked fine just uh really dirty right here and air can't get through there so i don't know if you want to clean your own ac unit all you got to do is take those screws off and whatever. don't blame me when you break something So now we got the inside of it. All right, the easiest thing to do at this point, <clears throat> you can cut the radiator while it's still up here. It makes it a lot easier because you don't have to hold it as much. But you go ahead and I'm gonna cut these copper lines off right here that go back to the compressor or sealed unit, whatever you want to call it. Put my glasses on. Cut those lines off and now I'm just gonna cut down here I wish I had a shorter blade but I don't and this is all gonna come down to if you like cutting the noodles off or if you like cutting the reefer ends off you watch one of my other videos where I go into that in more detail but um, for this purpose I am just gonna cut the ends off I might have to pull this out because that stuff's gonna be in the way That end off. Since a lot of that's going to be in the way, I'm going to pull this off. Cut it right here. Hope you can still see it. That's why it's going so slow. All 
All right, now we got our coil off. Now I usually just use uh, my massive body weight to uh, kind of flatten these out. Uh, allows you to put more in your truck. Car, whatever. Now we're gonna get everything free around this uh, compressor, sealed unit, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna get everything free around it. That way it's easier to take it off because it's bolted down to the plate here. So I'm gonna cut this copper off as close as I can to here. Now, my advice to you, if you are uh, not recovering the oil out of here, because there's, there's gonna be refrigerant oil in here, um, or I don't know the proper name for it, but either way, there's oil in there. My advice is take something, put it in there, and clog it up. Uh, because obviously it's more weight when you sell it. And you're not ripping anyone off, because uh, they're actually gonna recycle the oil out of here as well when it gets to where it's going. And you take that out and recycle it and uh, so they, they don't really care if the oil's in there or not but if you lose the oil well number one if it goes under the ground it's bad for the environment probably and uh, just using the old noggin there and uh, you're also going to lose weight and whenever you go and sell this as a compressor sealed unit uh, they actually call the code name for these some some people refer to them as vaders I am and I'm taking it because uh, you know they look like Darth Vader's helmet uh, so Plug those up, get paid for the oil, instead of letting it drain out, hurting the environment. Sounds like a, a no-brainer to me. All right, so now we have these bolts that are left on the compressor, and uh, the majority of these are usually half-inch. So we're just gonna take these four bolts off, and I think one of them's already out, to tell you the truth. And some of them can be kind of kind of stubborn sometimes uh, and if that's the case sometimes you can just take a sawzall or something underneath them and just cut them off or whatever and then this thing is just going to come off and there you go and uh, now we're going to take everything inside and uh, we're going to break it down a little bit more uh, so you can see how to get the best value out of everything. All right, here we go. All right, right here we have the fan with the motor on it. We got to get this iron guard off of it. So you're just going to remove these nuts right here and take this guard off. That's going to go with your iron. Now, normally. I mean, you can try to take this off, and sometimes they're really rusted up. I hope you can see this, but uh, there's a little uh, bolt right here, and you can unscrew that, and usually this will come off of the shaft. You might have to spray it down with something. Um, best way to get that off, uh, we normally take a torch and torch them, or if you have enough space in here, I don't know, I'm probably not gonna be able to see it. If you take a Sawzall, not a battery-operated Sawzall, when you plug in, it'll cut through that shaft really quick, and. You'd be surprised. I mean, I've, I've had blades go through hundreds of these things. Uh, you'd be surprised how quick it can actually cut through there um, <clears throat> to get that off. However, these fans right here are aluminum. And usually, if you throw these in with aluminum, people aren't going to care. Uh, I mean, if you throw them in with the motors, uh, they're not going to care if they're aluminum. But if they're steel, they got to come off. Uh, most buyers are not going to buy them with steel blades. If they are, they're probably not getting as good of a price on the uh, their motors when they go to sell them um, but for this case uh, and, and usually when we have a torch we just run it along here and it just melts them right off then we just throw those in the aluminum uh, just throw them in like a sheet package so uh, but for this case we're just gonna weigh this whole thing up as a motor uh, just so you can get an idea it's, it's really up to you what you want to do all right I know I'm dealing with a lot of Sun uh, so I got a lot of shade here. I'm gonna try to get this so you can see it uh, best you can. Um, I'm not uh, 
I'm not a movie maker, really. Cinematographer or something like that. Take those iron screws off. Now these right here are number two copper because they have solder on them and they have oil all over them. Now if you wanted to, I mean, technically it's really up to you, but uh, hey Chewy, will you hand me those loppers? So it's really up to you. Um, <clears throat> but if you wanted to, like watch this. So technically if I cut it here to get the solder off, and I cut it here, this solder off. If this isn't covered in oil, so if you wiped it off, it becomes number one copper. So if you want to, you can sit there and go through all this stuff and turn stuff into number one copper. It just that just all depends on you if you have the time uh, and whatnot. You know, it's going to bring you uh, right now the spreads. Uh, you're probably looking somewhere. Uh, I think. 20, 20 cents a pound. I mean, it depends on where you're going, but uh, a difference of 10 to 20 cents a pound. <clears throat> so this is all number two. Number two copper. And then we have these items. Um, now, if you take a sawzall, you can cut this pretty close. Uh, but without a sawzall, all you have is loppers right here. We can cut that off. We gotta cut it right here. If you're using a sawzall, you could probably cut it closer to the brass because this piece right here is brass. Cut that off. Now, technically, wipe this down. It just depends on where you go, but you know, wipe that down. No solder, no paint on it, anything like that. I'd say throw it in your number one. And then you got this piece, and you can come through and cut this later. Uh, this is something I wouldn't cut with those things. Um, I think it's a little bit harder right here because you have two pieces of copper combining together. But you can throw this in your brass. Doesn't have any other iron on it, so it's clean brass. Now, some yards might buy this as. Hope it's going into focus. Some people might buy this piece if you just cut it off like this. They might buy it as dirty brass, refinery brass, whatever kind of category they have. Uh, we probably just throw it in our dirty, or you know, it just depends on how bad it is. I just leave the wire on there. I mean, cut it off if you want. But the trick to cutting brass uh, nipples off, and right here it's just a small pipe, so it doesn't really make a difference. But sometimes you know you have a pipe that's like this thick. And the trick to get the best uh, recovery of copper off of it is to cut it at an angle, like a V shape. Uh, I really hope you can see that well enough. But if you cut it at a V shape, it gets more copper off, rather than just cutting it on both sides straight. So, you can see how when I cut it in a V shape, I didn't leave any copper on the brass. Hopefully you can see it. <clears throat> Number two, have another brass piece right here. Cut that with these. This piece is brass. And then you have this, it's just iron. Again, you don't want to cut it right here with these. You can cut it with the saws all right here close. But with these things, don't cut it where the two pieces of copper meet. It's pretty strong there. And then iron. <clears throat> so that pretty much covers everything. So now we're going to go inside and weigh it up. All right, we're going to start by weighing the iron. Got our scale set at, well, <laughs> scale set at zero. Tear 66. All right, so that's all our iron that we had. So we're gonna 
put that tear in here, 66 pounds, 65 pounds of iron. All right, so now we got the compressor on the scale, showing 69 pounds. We hit the tear button, put the scale back to zero. So now we can add more items to it. We can have the reefer in. Four pounds. Reef rinse, hit the tear, take the scale back to zero. Now we have the aluminum copper coil, aluminum copper radiator, whatever you want to call it. Showing 42 pounds. Zero it out. Got the motor. Electric motor is 19. Zero that out. Now we're going to have the number two copper. Remember some of these pieces you can clean to be number one if you want. Just throw them all on there. So you have number two copper. Two pounds. And then we have the brass. Oh, gotta zero it out. And the brass is going to be two pounds and then the dirty brass probably not even going to weigh up and it didn't change anything but you still want to keep it inside because when you add it with the other ac units you're taking apart just like the insulated wire we didn't cut all the wire off and put it on there uh because it probably won't even equal up to a pound but uh you can uh save it up till you get enough all right all right, right here I have the total uh, was sixty dollars and thirty eight cents. You can pause that if you want, so you can go through all those numbers. Just wanted to put that on there. Uh, right here, uh, next is something I like to do. I like to uh, see how much I actually made per pound off of it uh, total. So our total weight was two hundred five pounds. It was only two hundred three pounds of extra material that we had, but I added two pounds for anything we might not have got or lost or whatever. So if we turned it in whole just the way it was, we would have made $8.20 because we would have sold it as iron. Um, but when we tore it apart, it came out to $60.38. So what I like to do, it's always interesting, is uh, divide the total that you uh, upgraded, so $60.38 divided by 205 pounds. It's important that you do that in that order. Uh, so 60.38 divided by 205 pounds equals 29 cents per pound. So we made all that material become 29 cents per pound, essentially. Uh, it's just always interesting to see how that works. All right, well, that's it. Uh, if you made it this far, you watched a lot of stuff. So thanks for watching.